Hi, I'm John Lentini here with On a Mail Location, and we're here at OhioCon 2015. I'm here with Brad Swift. Hello. How are you doing today? Fantastic. How about yourself? Good. Having a good con? Oh, it's an amazing con. This is a great show. Great people, uh, attendees, organizers, the people that run this show, everybody that comes here is phenomenal, and it's a, it's a really good time. I just picked you up from a Project Beck concert. How did that go? Oh, it was phenomenal. And they, they actually let me get, get up there and do a, a little song as well. But the, the show was amazing. It was one of the big, big things that I wanted to see while I was here. So I was lucky that I was able to not only uh, view it, but uh, be part of it in some small way. And we're about two days in. So how are you enjoying OhioCon overall so far? It's insanely busy, super crazy and hectic. But I wouldn't have it any other way. It's great. The days are going by way too fast. <laughs> by the end of tomorrow, I'm going to be blinking and thinking, what happened to the weekend? You know, where did it go? Uh, any current projects you can share that you're working on right now? Ooh, yeah, we're not allowed to talk about those things anymore. It's funny, I, I've noticed a bit of a shift. Almost everything I work on now has some kind of a non-disclosure agreement attached to it, so I'm not allowed to talk about it. What I can say, without getting into specifics, is um, I actually am working currently on an anime project, which is great, because there hasn't been any anime in Vancouver, which is where I'm from and live, um, for a while. So I got this new show that I'm working on, and it's, it's pretty incredible, because I've been lucky enough to play several characters on it. I think I'm up to character like eight now on this series, so I'm pretty excited when this uh, when this actually hits. And I may end up um, on the big screen in a very small capacity sometime uh, sometime this year. So a couple couple things that I'm kind of excited about that I'm not allowed to talk about at all. When you work on a series that has more than multiple characters in it, what's your mindset when you're going in? Um, well, first of all, I cackle and giggle because I'm so excited about it. Uh, the funny part is is when these characters actually interact with each other. Oh, nice. That's a lot of fun. And it's not the easiest thing in the world because you got to make sure you change up your voice enough that it sounds like two different characters without having everybody be too over-the-top zany cartoon sounding, right? Because they are based on real-life people to some degree. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's an adventure for sure. Uh, what techniques do you use to maintain stamina and keep your voice healthy when acting? <laughs> well, I wish I could tell you that there's like amazing, yeah, that there was, you know, some fancy technique book that I used. What I do is I drink a lot of water and to kind of prep my voice for, for a session or for an audition or whatever, I'm not too ashamed to admit that I just sing in the car. So it's good to kind of, you know, warm up your voice in the morning for a big session and also make the rest of the commuters think that you're absolutely insane. Uh, so it's two birds, one stone, really. Uh, since you became involved in voice acting, how has the work environment changed due to new technology? For example, has it affected your commute? That's actually a really good question. I mean, we're, we live in a very exciting time right now where technology is just jumping leaps and bounds you know every day uh, things are getting more and more accessible um, a, a, a big point that I notice is that you know even 10 years ago recording and stuff like that it seemed like it, it had to be done by professionals in a studio and now we have the technology to do a lot of that uh, from home so when I'm submitting auditions and things a lot of times I'm recording them myself at home which Unfortunately, it means that not only are you acting, now you have to become engineer and stuff. So you have to kind of be willing to teach yourself how to learn new things and things that m might have seemed daunting before, but at some point you just dive right in and see what you can do. Uh, you probably have some voice work for Street Fighter Tekken not too long ago. Based on your experience, what differences have you noticed in performing in video games compared to anime? Uh, yeah. Video games are incredible, as we all know, because we all play them. Very difficult to record, very different from anime. Um, one thing in particular is, you know, video games have this immersive environment that has, it has so many variables, so many different things that can happen to affect the gameplay and affect your experience. So in order to record for that, you have to do several different options and variations of dialogue and exertions and things like that so that the, the player experience is completely customized. Which means if you're doing battle cries, you're not doing one or two battle cries, you're doing 30 or 40 battle cries depending on what scenario is happening within the game. So those sessions can be extremely taxing on your voice. And it's a lot of fun, incredible stuff but it can also make you extremely drained by the end of the day. Um, 
but again, it's it's always a real treat to get to work on a project like you know a Street Fighter across tech, and so you suck it up and you you do what you can and you pass out later. Uh, what type of changes have you noticed in fan communities and conventions like this over the years? It's just getting bigger. It's one thing I've noticed, like, I mean, I've been coming to conventions for a while now, and no matter what's happening in the world, be it state of the economy or, or just, you know, general things in different areas, conventions are the only thing that I've noticed in the last, you know, several years that continue to grow every year. I don't think I've ever been to a convention that had fewer people than the previous year. And it doesn't matter if the economy is in the tank and all that kind of stuff, it seems like the fans of anime and just you know pop culture in general will always find a way to come out to these shows and experience embrace and promote the the things the projects that they're passionate about and that's a true testament to what a fan is making sacrifices in the real world so that we can have these little pleasures like this weekend right things that we would if we had to miss this we'd be very upset and so we make sure that we find ways that we can always do this. Okay, so rolling into that, what message do you have the fans out there? Uh, thank you. Um, not to get sappy for a little bit, but I, I call the entertainment industry, which includes the voice acting side, it's basically an industry of rejection. So you have to have a pretty thick skin because you're auditioning, you're getting turned down, lots of rejection. It's not really an industry that has to be super nice because um, there's so many people that want to do it. So if you're difficult, um, there's 100 people that are willing to push you out of the way and, and, and do whatever you're unwilling to do. But because of that, especially if you go through um, you know, dry patches where you're, in, in my case, I find a lot of times I'm second choice for some of the, the jobs that I really want, and you get down on yourself, right? And there are times because I have, I mean, voice acting is the dream job, but I also have a real job like everybody else because I do enjoy eating and I have to pay rent and all that kind of stuff. And there's been times where I'm feeling down on myself because I'm not getting as much voice work as I would like. And I start to think, well, maybe I should send, like, steer my career in a different direction. And then I come to something like this, and you get so much encouragement from all the people that, uh, that are involved with these shows. It kind of reminds you what you love about it. And it gives me a good, a good boot in the backside to say, suck it up get over yourself and just keep trying keep with it keep with it and it's amazing the uh the creative energy that flows through these conventions i actually do bottle up put it in my luggage take it home with me and use it for the rest of the year to kind of keep me going keep me inspired uh, so as much as we come here and get treated very well it's totally for selfish reasons that I'm here because I take so much back home with me and I'm so appreciative of it. And it's, it's just a cool experience that now that I've been able to have it in my life, I can't imagine not having this type of feeling um, in my life at all. There would be a serious void that I'd have to fill with something not near as productive as what we do um, here. Excellent answer. <laughs> uh, fun question for me. What do you remember about the hockey game last year? Um, the home team won? Not true. Not true, unfortunately. Okay, I, what, what I do remember is um, the local team were on a, I think it was a franchise record home winning streak. So I thought this is a perfect time for me to show up because they're kicking butt, taking some names. And then I arrived at that game and it was the first loss that they'd had to end that streak. All your fault. I was gonna take full responsibility for it, but unfortunately, their goalie was just not on his game that night. So initially, the first couple went in, and I was thinking, oh, I'm just bad luck. And he had been playing spectacularly in the whole run that they were having of success. And when the goals kept coming, I realized, no, he's just off his game. So I can't take all the responsibility. So there you go. Who were they playing? Oh, <laughs> I don't want to admit it, because it was Buffalo, who at the time was the worst team in the league, too. Maybe it was my fault. I apologize to all you Blue Jackets fans. Yeah, whoops. And what was the score? Um, that I don't remember. A lot to a little. Five to two. Was it five to two? Do you remember the goalie or any goals that were scored? Um, well, here, I was too busy apologizing to all the fans around me and taking the blame and drinking more beers. Got any predictions for this season? Uh, well, I got to make predictions for my team, right? 
Okay, we, we got we got a, my team is Vancouver, the Canucks, because that's where I'm born and raised, obviously. And so my boys started off to an incredible start, which they were not supposed to have. This is we're kind of going through a rebuilding time, yeah. and we came up to a great start, which I didn't think was going to be able to last the season. And now we're starting to feel that a little bit. We've kind of strung together a couple of losses, near wins that we're missing out. So my prediction and I, I really don't want to jinx anything, is that this year, unlike last year, my boys are going to make the playoffs. What happens beyond that, who knows? You know? Just get to the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, just get into the playoffs, and then anybody can win at that point. Brad, thank you so much for hanging with us. Always Answer pleasure. some questions. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. I certainly will. Can't help it. Look at this. Yeah, incredible.